Okay, I get it. You're hesitant to pursue the actuarial career because the job market is competitive right now and you're just not sure that you'll be able to get a job once you do all the work to get there. You don't wanna waste time, money, energy on a big goal when you're not guaranteed to get a job afterwards. Maybe you're not even sure if you're going to like the career once you get there. So here's what I do to overcome the fear when I'm in a similar situation. Basically, what I do is create a backup plan. That way I can go all in on my big goal without feeling the fear of what if this doesn't work. I'm Bria, an associate of the Society of Actuaries and leader of over 400 aspiring actuaries in the Actuary Accelerator community. So basically, this video is going to cover some of the backup career options that you could go into if for some reason the actuarial career doesn't work out for you, which I'm very confident that it will and it can if you are willing to put in the work, the time, and the effort, but it's always nice just to have that backup plan just in case. So in this video, I'm not going to cover the obvious careers like financial analyst or data analyst, statistician, mathematician. I'm not going to cover those. Today, I'm going to be talking about unique careers that you probably haven't heard about before. These are ones that I, as a data loving math geek, would absolutely love to be in. They sound so fun, so interesting, just as much as the actuarial career. Okay. So let's get into this. So this career sounds really interesting and the work sounds actually fairly similar to actuarial work. Actually, in my research, I found that there was an insurance company nearby me that's actually hiring for a position in this field right now and they were willing to hire someone with an actuarial science degree. This is called a business intelligence analyst and basically their primary mission is to help a business improve its performance by analyzing huge data sets and gather key insights that the company can use to make strategic business decisions and they'll even be able to track these decisions to measure their effectiveness as well sounds cool doesn't it the main difference between a BI analyst and an actuary is essentially that an analyst is going to be looking at data from the past and making decisions based on that whereas I think the actuarial career is fairly unique because we are always looking into the future and strategically trying to reduce future financial risk so here's why a BI analyst would make a great backup plan for a someone that decides to pursue the actuarial career and wants to just eliminate that fear of what if this doesn't work. The reasons are one, because on your journey to becoming a top actuarial candidate, you're definitely going to be learning Excel and a programming language. Now in a BI analyst role, these are things that you're definitely going to have to use. So it would be extremely beneficial for you to have these skills already and it would help you make a seamless transition into a BI analyst role. In addition, you're also probably going to have have some data related experience if you've done the steps to become a top actuarial candidate. So that experience is also going to be really helpful in getting a BI analyst job in the future if you need to. The BI analyst role doesn't seem to have the same barriers to entry as the actuarial career. And when I say barriers to entry, what I mean is the exam process. It doesn't seem like there's any huge educational requirements that you'd have to meet in order to become a BI analyst. So this would be probably a fairly easy career for you to get into if for some reason the actuarial career doesn't work out for you. The salary growth of a BI analyst is fairly similar to an actuarial career in the early years, but what it seems like is that there's a lot more potential and opportunity for growth in an actuarial career. So in those cases where you do decide to keep on climbing the corporate ladder, you're probably going to be able to eventually make more in an actuarial role than you would be in a BI analyst role. The salaries really seem to differ once you become very much experienced in the career. Okay, so next is a career that you may have never thought about before, but there are tons of opportunities in this field right now for anyone that loves data, stats, and solving business problems. This is called a marketing research director. And this field sounds so interesting that it might actually be what I would have decided to go into if I didn't decide to go the actuarial path, which by the way, I don't regret at all. This would probably just be my number one backup option. So a marketing research director's responsibility is to to analyze a company's customers, their competition, and their industry so that they can make strategic marketing decisions that will help them gain more customers and stand out from the competition in their industry. They use tons of data collected over years and years and years to create a marketing message and marketing campaigns that really resonate with their potential customers. They're also looking to optimize ROI. So ROI stands for return on investment. And basically that means they want to get the biggest bang 
for their buck in terms of the money that they spend on advertising and promoting the company. It's an extremely quantitative and analytical role that will definitely require a math degree and some great technical skills like Excel and maybe a programming language like Python or something like that. But the good news is that you'll already have those from pursuing the actuarial career. So this won't be new information that you have to learn. And just as you would expect, this is an analytical role. So any data related experience that you gain on your journey to becoming a top candidate for actuarial positions will definitely be beneficial in getting a marketing research director role. Okay. So have you ever wished that you were one of those supercomputer hackers like Penelope on the show 24? Well, you maybe could be. Kinda. Mostly just the opposite way though. So instead of being a data hacker, you could be a data encryptor. Basically, this is called a cryptographer. And this is someone that creates algorithms to encrypt data and make it very secure and unreadable by humans. These people might even be involved in analyzing current encryption systems to see if there are any weaknesses or vulnerabilities in them. With so much of day-to-day -day life being locked up on the internet these days, these skills are highly sought after. So now I hesitated to include the cryptographer on this list because some sources say that you'd be able to start your career with a bachelor's degree but eventually if you wanted to move up in this field then you'd have to get a master's degree however the pay in this field is really great so it might just be worth it for you to go get that master's degree once you get your foot in the door i just thought this career was so awesome and absolutely had to be on this list because it would definitely be one of my career backup options if i was in your situation again like other careers your Technical skills, Excel, Python, any programming language are going to be beneficial here as well as any data related experience that you have. And this career especially would be great for someone that has learned in depth several different programming languages because it sounds like this is a job where you're going to be using those all the time. In a lot of the job postings that I looked at while preparing for this video, I saw that Python was commonly mentioned in job postings. And that is a programming language that I have highly recommended aspiring actuaries learn how to use. So let's say for a minute that the actuarial career doesn't work out for you, which I'm 100% sure that it can, but let's just say it didn't. Which of these three options would you choose as your backup plan? Or is there another career that you've been considering as your backup plan? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear from you what other options you are considering. Basically, these three jobs that I have mentioned here are just a tiny itty bitty fraction of the hundreds of jobs that are available to someone like you that has the skills of a top actuarial candidate. So if fear of not getting that actuarial job or not liking it, is something that has been holding you back, now you know that you have tons of other options available to you. Data is everywhere in today's world, and as you grow into a top candidate, you are inevitably going to be gaining the same exact skills that are required for these other jobs and so many others. So if you haven't already, make sure you go and watch my video right here about the top skills and qualifications that actuarial employers are looking for so that you know where to start now that you have hopefully decided on a backup plan and you are going to go all in on the actuarial career. That is all for today. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, me again. I'm popping in here to do a quick encore for this video. Now, I completely understand if you are hesitant, concerned about whether the actuarial career will really work out for you. But I strongly believe that if you are a top actuarial candidate, that it's almost inevitable that you'll be able to get an actuarial job. I mean, if you are an amazing actuarial candidate with qualifications that really make you stand out and you have a good personality, you fit well with the team, why wouldn't an insurance company choose to hire you? There's no reason not to. So I highly recommend that on your actuarial journey, if you really want this, you work hard to become a top actuarial candidate. Now, this video right here is going to explain to you what qualifications actuarial employers are really looking for. It's not just exams. You really have to do more than just that. So make sure you do go take some time right now to watch that video because it's going to give you some insight that might just surprise you and help you really become the best candidate that you can be on your actuarial journey. Okay, that's really it. Bye for now.